Hi, Dr. Ariane here from the Movement Paradigm. Today I'm going to talk about inflammation. So what is it, do you have it, and how can you handle it? But before I dive in, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ariane Miss Smart. Don't forget to hit that little alert button so that you stay tuned for new content every single week. Inflammation is our normal defense and repair mechanism. We have five classic signs of inflammation. So that is going to be heat, pain, redness, swelling, and loss of function. Let's say, for example, we sprain our ankle. We step off a curb, roll our ankle, we are going to have an acute swelling, often heat associated with it, of course pain, of course loss of function. So we're very familiar with an acute injury of what happens as it relates to inflammation. So now we'll dive into what are the different things that contribute to inflammation. We have four main categories of inflammatory triggers in our body. So the first one is going to be food. Imagine that. So I've talked about this in many other videos, so please feel free to check out my video on adverse food reactions or inflammatory foods. But when we're talking about foods, we can have adverse food reactions that are frequently overlooked as a major contributor to a whole host of medical conditions. So we can have eggs or gluten or dairy become inflammatory to the body. So every time you are exposed to that, it can cause an immune reaction. Then the next category would be bugs. So this could be things like, um, excuse me, this could be parasites or ticks. So if there's some kind of infection, then that can cause some type of immune reaction. The third category is toxins. Now, we are exposed to internal and external toxins on the regular basis. So, for example, an internal toxin could be something like yeast overgrowth, which once again is an infection that would need to be cleared up that's contributing to inflammation. An external toxin could be things like mold that we're exposed to. It could be something like EMFs that we all are exposed to on a regular basis. Herbicides and pesticides are two of the biggest ones and the biggest offenders because they are everywhere. So if we go outside, even if we're not using them in our own home, when we go outside in the environment, we are exposed to these on a regular basis, as well as cleaning chemicals and you know pro uh, skin care products. So we have, for women, 168 chemicals are put on our face before we leave for the day. For men, it's not just you ladies, 87 chemicals, and that can include de deodorants and shampoos and conditioners and colognes and things like that. And that's uh, by the, F uh, the Environmental Working Group. And then the last category is going to be, so we have food, we have bugs, we have toxins. The last category is trauma. So trauma could mean physical trauma. So let's say the example of rolling the ankle, that's a physical trauma. You're working out of the gym, you hurt your shoulder. That's a physical trauma. However, there's also emotional trauma. So stress, I am so sorry, but you've also heard me talk about this many times, is one of the biggest inflammatory mediators for the body. So that is another huge, huge category. And then there could be chemical trauma as well. So once again, these are the four main categories and there's also hormone dysfunction, which contributes to inflammation as well. Uh, we won't dive into that right now. So now we'll break down acute versus chronic inflammation. So initially when we use the analogy of the ankle sprain, we have all of these white blood cells rush into the area to heal the area. So typically inflammation should happen around four, within the first four to five days after an injury. But what can often happen is that you can begin to have a loss of tolerance in that particular area. So let's just say, for example, that the ankle just doesn't seem to be getting better. So you've you know, done all the right treatments, you've stayed off of it, you've gone to PT, but it still just doesn't seem to get better. And it just keeps getting aggravated. So you can have a local loss of tolerance. But then let's say that now you all of a sudden get a shoulder injury, and then maybe the, sh the ankle starts to get a little better, and then all of a sudden you get a cold. So then we start to think that there is systemic inflammation, okay? And then oftentimes when you have systemic inflammation, then you begin to have a loss of tolerance, a systemic loss of tolerance 
which means that anything that happens to you, it just totally rocks your system and you just can't get ahead. Something just keeps happening. You just kind of feel like the world's fighting against you. So then that's when it doesn't become an ankle injury anymore. It's not an ankle injury and it's not a shoulder injury. It's an inflammation issue. It means that your body is having a very difficult time regulating inflammation. It cannot manage it, so it's losing tolerance. So things just continue to happen. So it's when you have one thing and then the other thing and then the other thing. So this is really when it becomes a, I always say a yellow light, if not a red light, is hey, something, something serious is happening. Let's, let's try to stop this inflammatory cycle. So we wanna remember that 75 to 90% of all human disease is linked to inflammation. So that means anything from cancer to Parkinson's to Alzheimer's to things like eczema and other skin conditions, uh, any GI issues, all of these things are linked back to inflammation, even high cholesterol. So when you begin to have these diagnoses from a doctor or you've kind of figured what you've kind of self-diagnosed, you want to really be thinking that is this, um, is this a, uh, let's just say a skin issue or is this an inflammatory issue? And essentially it's most likely going to be an inflammatory issue. So you want to think, how can I decrease inflammation in my body? To decrease inflammation in your body, you wanna be thinking about multiple things. It's not just one thing. The first and foremost is I would say to be able to identify your stressors and begin to incorporate different stress reduction techniques in your life, uh, whether that's mindfulness, meditation, whether that's breath work, yoga, seeing a counselor, a psychologist, I so strongly believe in that. And so I think just you know making sure that you're able to identify it and you have the appropriate tools. And if you don't have them now, be able to find them from someone else. We have, there's plenty of coaches and psychologists and therapists and health professionals that can help you on your journey. So I strongly advise that. Because once again, that is one of the biggest inflammatory triggers in my clinic. That is really what I see on, on a regular basis, that that's one of the biggest drivers for things. So outside of stress, identifying your inflammatory foods. So you can check out my video on the elimination diet if you want to really dive in and determine what foods really are inflammatory for you. This is actually a better way to approach it than the food sensitivity test in most cases. So you wanna think about that as well. Um, then, of course, making sure that you're getting enough sleep. So I've also done a sleep video, so please make sure to check that out uh, on lots of different tips to improve your sleep habits. And of course, movement, but making sure that you are not putting too much stress on your body if there is inflammation. If you do have systemic inflammation, you wanna be thinking about maybe some adding some restorative work, uh, maybe adding, maybe changing your routine so that it's appropriate to support you in your journey of healing. Healing takes time. It, it is a journey and it's something that does not happen overnight. It is not, a, it's not a quick fix. Uh, but once you can begin to recognize the signs, then you can begin to really start to make some changes in your lifestyle that can support you on this journey. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, reach out. And as always, uh, please make sure that you like and share it if this was helpful for you. And once again, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ariane Missimer, and uh, feel free to, to hit that little alert button so that you stay tuned for new content. Thank you as always for your support and I'll see you soon.